name Jesus. There is none like you, God. Lord, how we just love to exalt your name, O oh God. How we love to magnify your name, O oh God. How we love to glorify you. How we love to lift your name high, Jesus. Thank you, God. There is none like you. Not in all the earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we give your name praise, God. We give you the thanks, God. Lord, for all that you've done for us, God. For all that you are, God. We give you thanks, God.
upon every heart, upon every soul. Father, we give you praise. Bless your word in this house. Bless every soul under the sound of our voice. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God the glory. Somebody give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give him the height. Come on and give him the height. Come on, give him the height. With a grateful heart, give thanks. Yes, Lord, with a grateful heart, give him thanks. With a grateful heart. Yes, Lord, because he's giving. Yes, Jesus Christ, his son. Come on and give him praise, beloved. Come on, give God the praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of our great God. We thank God for you, beloved. Thank God. We're here, the inhabitants of Christ ministries. Yes, Lord. I see him, Tampa, glorifying God from the neighborhoods to the nations. God has been faithful to us. I say God has been faithful to us. Yes, Lord, he's been kind. We thank God for each and every one of you in the house of God. And we thank God for you in social media land giving, uh, joining in with us as we uh, invoke God and, and beseech his blessings and his presence. We thank God for his presence. Anybody thank God for his presence? Amen. That was weak. Anybody thank God for his presence? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank God. We give God praise for First Lady. We thank God for her. Yes, Lord. Come on and give God some praise. Yes, Lord. For our First Lady. We thank God for her. Come on, praise team, and let's worship the Lord today. We're in, we're in Holy Week. Yes, Lord. We're in Holy Week. We're going to glorify our God. Yes, Lord. Are y'all ready? I want you to praise God for being God. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready? Are you? <laughs> Lord Jesus, let me let that go. I 
Somebody shout increase. increase. You know, the church is the most powerful institution in the world today. The church is the most powerful institution. If she can understand this, and if the people would take their responsibilities the way God intended for them, she would exceed the area that they occupy now. But the people of God have to take their obligations and responsibilities serious in order to be effective in this world. Somebody shout increase. Increase. You are the believer. Look at Proverbs 10 and 4 in the New and Living Translation. The church, beloved, is the most powerful institution in the world. But the person, the people have to believe this and live in it. Proverbs 10 and 4 in the New and Living Translation. And this is what we were saying. If the person or the people don't do their part. Proverbs 10 and 4 says lazy people. Lazy people are what? Are soon what? Poor. The lazy people. And that goes to life. That goes to life. When there's no effort, when there's no, no care, this goes to life. This will be the fruit of our life. Lazy people are so, it, the, the wave, the wave uh, only take you so far until the real truth comes out. A false or in your own strength, I take you only so far unto the real truth where the anointing needs to be the real truth to come out and the evidence, the fruit of it, the effectiveness to show that that person will be soon poor. Lazy people are soon poor. But hard workers, what? They get rich. Hard workers, hard workers, they get rich. Hard workers, these are people that work hard. Uh, hard workers, they, you got to tell them to slow down. You got to tell them that they're almost doing too much because hard workers give their all. They give their all. They don't wait for people to tell them, but they just do it. It like in your job, you get applauded for showing initiative. You get applied for you get applauded for coming in early, and 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 uh, when you apply yourself or stay late or you do the extra things, these are hard workers. 
Look at Proverbs 3, 9 through Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Somebody shout increase. Increase. Proverbs 9 through 10. And I'm going to read this again in the New and Living Translation. Honor the Lord with your wealth. With your wealth. Now hard work is this is where you live at. Because everything about you is wealthy. Your mental state, your health, your, your mind, your body, your soul, your finances, your spirit, everything about you is wealthy. He said, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything that you produce. Now, whatever you produce, beloved, God wants the best part of that what you produce. Can I get an amen there? He said, then he will fill your bars with grain and your vats with an overflow with good wine. You know, the fruitfulness, this is a, this is a system. The way that we can live a life in fruitfulness. You know, fruitfulness is a supernatural concept of the kingdom of God. You know, we talked about learning how to live in the kingdom of God. And the people of God, they don't, we, we struggle with uh, understanding how to live in the kingdom of God because we struggle with the fruitfulness of understanding that it's okay to live in supernatural concepts. And what is a supernatural concept? It's a way that somebody might not understand. It's a way that your neighbor might not understand why you work so hard. Why you trust God so much. Why do you believe God like that? Why do you go to church so much? Why do you pray so much? This is a supernatural concept. Anybody live their life with a supernatural concept? Well, regardless of how your finances say, you still trust God. Anybody trust God out there? Yes, Lord, regardless, regardless, beloved, because Satan uses the laws of creation to build his kingdom. Satan uses the laws what God has placed in this life to build his kingdom. The, if the one that isn't working hard, that, that slowful person, that, that person that's lazy, the procrastinate, Satan will use that person to build their kingdom. That's saying to use it, but it, God, God sowed a seed, a, a seed, a tree in you to build his kingdom. I said, God sowed a seed of you, in you, a tree. God sowed in you. Look at the person next to you and say, in you, there's a tree. There's a tree. God sowed this thing in you. I say, God sowed this thing in you. Somebody pout on your chest and in your belly and shout increase. increase. Yes, Lord, he, he sowed this in you to pull from you and to build his kingdom. That's what God is using, the seed that's in you, the tree that's in you to build his kingdom. Yes, Lord, but, you know, people try to hold back sin. Yes, Lord, with an ungodly tree. Yes, Lord, but we can't hold the sin back with an ungodly tree. When God has placed a tree in us, well, Satan is trying to place that say He's trying to mimic God. And if God wants you to increase, Satan, he doesn't want you to increase. He'll give you things. He'll offer you things. To try to lure you from God's kingdom, somebody shout increase. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You don't have to do what the world, you don't have to go to the world to get anything, beloved. If God has placed a tree in you, you are a producer. Somebody tell the person next to you, you are a producer. 
You are God placed in church and put this responsibility on the church, the most powerful institution. If change is going to happen in your community, in your region, it's going to be by you. That's why he said you're the light of the world. Do you believe you're the light of the world? That's why the system that God has placed. Beloved, you got to think of yourself in this supernatural concept. Somebody shout increase. Yeah, so I'm going to teach and I'm going to preach all that bad stuff. All them, them spoiled seeds. All them ungodly trees out of you so you can live this life richly and wealthy according as God's word. Yeah, so God's tree is in you, beloved. Yes, Lord, and if you don't back up on God's word, yes, Lord, if you don't back up on God's word, you can, you, if you believe, you shall see God's glory. That tree is going to blossom. I say that tree is going to blossom if you don't back up on God's word. Anybody believe God's word? Somebody shout his offering time. Beloved, we're, we're teaching and preaching this thing. Yes, Lord, so, so we would become the people who God called us to be. Not that poor person. Not the one that has a great understanding of living poor. But not desiring to live and get an understanding to live wealthy. We'll glory in being poor. But when somebody talking about wealthy and rich, then we cringe and want to back up. But he calls I would the Bible says, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Anybody scared of prosperity? Anybody scared of prosperity? I see you backing up in your spirit. That's good, beloved. Come on and tell somebody I'm moving forward. Yes, Lord, it's offering time. Beloved, we offer a few different ways to sow your seed. Uh, they'll be uh, viewed on our screen behind me and also on our social media uh, accounts. You know, we've, we've been doing a lot. And I thank God. We ask the members. We ask the members to sow to help out in form mission. We ask them to ask you to help out with all the evangelistic efforts. And you all stood up proudly. You gave without grudgingly. You gave faithfully. And beloved, we want to sincerely appreciate you. We want to sincerely appreciate you. We can't do anything for the, in the kingdom of God without finances. And we thank God for you being obedient to the Lord and to the vision of God. We thank God for you. We offer text to give, beloved. Text to give, the number is... Shown on our screen, and that number is 1-844-468-3549. And we also have uh, offer our cash app, and that's dollar sign IC Ministries Tampa. That's dollar sign IC Ministries Tampa. And then those in the house of God will serve you shortly. Yes, Lord, I, we appreciate you so much. Anybody glad that you're blessed? Amen. Yes, Lord, that was kind of, I don't know. First you were standing out proudly. Yes, so first you were saying the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. But when I just asked that, you all was kind of, are y'all scared? Are you, you scared of the devil to say it or what? You think it's not going to happen? Come on, are you proud to be blessed? Any blessed folks out here? I say any blessed folks, if you blessed, come on and say that you're blessed. You got to believe that you're blessed. You got to walk like you're blessed. You got to talk like you're blessed. And if you're blessed, give us, you live a life that's blessed. And give us, never give out a giving. I said a giver, never give out a giving. I'm a testament. I'm a, I have a testimony. Yes, a giver's never give out a giving if you're a giver. Anybody blessed out there today? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on and say, I know it. I know it. Yes, Lord. Come on, we're going to serve you. We're going to serve you, and we'll be back with you to pray over our offering. 
Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name. Apostle Paul teaches us in 1 Timothy that we should pray for all people and ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and to give thanks for them. So join us every morning at 6 a.m., Monday through Friday, and every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. as we do just that, glorifying God from the neighborhoods to our nation. Please listen carefully for all of the upcoming events in the month of April. On yesterday, we supported the New Life Village community for their Easter picnic. We thank God for each of you who came out to support this effort. <laughs> On April 7th, we will be having our Good Friday service at noon. This will be a virtual service, but if you're able to, please join us in the sanctuary. You are more than welcome. April 8th, we will be participating in the kickball game with the city. If you're interested in participating, please see Sister Jalisa after service to let her know your shirt size for that day. On April 14th, we will have another adult paint with a purpose session for the women of Belma Heights. 
And on April 21st, we will be having our youth day here at the church at 7 p.m. Please join us for food, fun, and games. Lastly, if you ordered a shirt with the new design, please see Sister Jalisa after service to get your shirt. If you'd like to receive all of our updates and reminders, please send an email to support at icministries.org or fill out one of our connect cards that one of the greeters can give to you. These are announcements for the week. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Uh, the kickball game is with women helping others. That's April 8th. They they have t-shirts they're going to give us for our team. Uh, so that's why uh, see Jalisa after service to give her your t-shirt sign so we can send that over for the kickball game. Uh, First Lady went to a, a women's, counts, uh, women's uh, conference, uh, the Winning, winning Women that was held at Bethel Outreach, uh, Pastor Mickens and Lady uh, Mickens. When I tell you, she came back uh, excited and full about what was uh, shared. So uh, uh, she was definitely excited about what happened. I'm not going to call her and put her on the spot, uh, but I, I just wanted to add that to the announcements. Uh, she was thoroughly pleased with that. So we thank God for the winning women Yes, Lord, in this city and nations, what is going on, how God is blessing our women to grow. Yes, Lord, we thank God. We thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise in this place. Come on, y'all can do better than that. He is our God, he is our creator. He is everything that we have ever needed him to be. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Does anybody love the Lord today? I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wrap me in your arms. You were my shelter from the storm. When all my friends were gone, you were right there all alone. I've never known a love like this before, no. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Oh, wrap me in your arms. You were my shelter from the storm. When all my friends were gone, you were right there all alone. I've never known a 
love like this before. No, no. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Does anybody truly love our God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I challenge each and every one of you, sing that with me. Come on, let's sing. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, just think about how good he's been. Come on and just sing it from your belly. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, one more time, my love. I love you, Jesus. Come on, all over this house. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Come on. More than anything. I love. I love you, Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. I worship. I worship and adore you. Just want. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more. Than Come on, again, I love, I love you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands all over this house. Hallelujah! I worship, I worship, and Lord, just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I love you more. Come on, one more time. I love, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, God. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. Just want, just want to tell you. Oh, I love, Lord, I love. Let's lift our voice to the Lord. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, let's stay right there at that last part. Lord, Lord, I love you more. Just tell them in your spirit, Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you last time. Lord, I love you more than anything. If you love the Lord, put your hands together in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. How many
many love the Lord today? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. How many really love the Lord today? Yes, Lord. God has been faithful, beloved. First Lady and I, we was, we was celebrating, relaxing uh, last, last week. And a, a family need came up, a family emergency came up. And there was a need for guardianship of two dear children. So we, we went through the courts and sat in a couple uh, court sessions and the Lord blessed us though we raised five children Larry Jaleesa, David Devin, Dyson five grandchildren Jade LJ Jalen David Kaylee Grace. Now we have two additional children to add to our role. We've taken custody of them. We're going to show you them. And I want you to pray with us and ask God's blessing with us. Come on, Giselle. Giselle, come on, Giselle, come on up here, Renee. Come on, Giselle. Yes, come on up here, Renee. Hey, man, they kind of shy. They, they, I didn't tell them we was gonna do this, but I just whispered to First Lady. And, and felt the need. Yes, Lord. So I want you to pray for us as we continue to raise children. Yes, yes Lord. By God's grace, we can do it. Yes. By God's faithfulness. And let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for trusting us with these children. Thank you, Lord, for giving us them. Father, we pray for your wisdom, your knowledge, your favor to rest in our minds and in our life, to be a blessing to these children's life, that they would grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they would be saved, that they would be children that serve you faithfully, with all their heart, all their strength, and all their life. Father, into thy hands, Lord, we commit them, and we commit our home, that you would be glorified in our home. In Jesus' name. And Father, bless this service. Bless your word. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Somebody give God some praise. Amen, amen. Uh, amen, amen. I was supposed to help her down, but she took off. Amen, amen. God is good, isn't he? You just never know what, what the Lord will have you do. If you have a willing heart, your life never stops. I said, if you have a willing heart, your life never stops. Your life never stops. Never stop. Yes, Lord. Come on and turn with me to Luke 19. 
Thank you, Lord. Luke 19. Luke 19, and let's start at the 28th verse. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me get myself settled up here. Yes, Lord. Are y'all ready? Y'all all right today? Yes, Lord. Luke 19 and 28, and I'm going to read this in the New and Living Translation. After telling this story, Jesus, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you shall see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying this colt? Just say the Lord needs it. Just say the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying this, that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. Amen. Amen. So they brought the colt to Jesus, the donkey, and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. Amen. Amen. For a thought today, beloved, let's use it's time for the oil of joy. It's time for the oil of joy. Amen. It's time for the oil of joy. You know, many, many battles aren't going to be won overnight, beloved. Many battles and some are going to take some time. And that, that's going to require us to have stamina to wait. Many battles aren't going to be won overnight, so it's going to require stamina for us to wait. Yes, Lord. And the question that we need to ask ourselves is, do we have the endurance to wait? Do we have the endurance to wait? And as uh, some things will fight against the promise that's set in our life, for surely all of us have promises that, that are on our life. And promises that's supposed to be or has to be fulfilled in our life. You know, as Jesus uh, and as we approach this holy week, you know, we need to think about it. it takes strength, beloved. For because some things will fight against that promise that's on your life. You know that your life should be better. You know that there's more in your life. And it takes strength, beloved. Like Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Anybody will wait today. Yes, but waiting is the hardest thing for a believer to do, beloved. Waiting is the hard, hardest thing for a believer to do. It's not necessarily praying. It's not necessarily fasting, but it's waiting. Waiting, uh, it, waiting is the hardest thing for a believer to do. Why? Because it takes stamina. Somebody shout stamina. stamina. It takes stamina. 
It takes stamina to remain. It takes stamina. And as Jesus was approaching and, and preparing to enter into this holy week, you can imagine what he's endured up to this part of his, his life. All the rejection, all the ridicule, all the lies, all the deceitfulness, but it takes stamina to remain. Somebody shout, I'm going to remain. Yeah, so it takes stamina to remain. It takes stamina to remain. Look at Nehemiah 8 and 10. It takes stamina to remain. It's time for the oil of joy, beloved. I, when I was, it's a mystery in the oil of joy. Yes, so there's a mystery in it. And if we can understand and get this mystery, beloved, we can unlock some harvest. We can unlock a harvest. Nehemiah 8 and 10. I don't know why it seemed like it was hidden right there. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8 and 10. Yes, Lord. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Somebody shout, it's time. It's time. This day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is what? The, for the joy of the Lord is what? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Beloved, it takes strength to remain. It takes strength to remain. Even when your marriage is, isn't growing and operating like it's supposed to. And your children aren't behaving like they're supposed to. And your family seem like they're falling apart and not coming together. And even your finances aren't where they should be. It takes strength. Somebody say it takes strength to remain. Yeah, so even when there's disappointment on the job, it takes strength to remain. But we need to know that the joy of the Lord is what? Is my strength. Somebody shout, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It takes strength to remain, beloved. Because, watch and listen to this. When fear meets you, it remember what we said. It takes strength to remain. So when fear meets you, you can't meet it with fear. Do you understand what I'm saying? When fear meets you, you can't meet that fear with fear. And don't you know we do that sometimes? That fear will try to enter into your mind and you'll try to come on and you'll use your fear. And But God said, I did not give you what? The spirit of fear. So don't you meet that fear with, with your fear. But meet it with joy, beloved. If we can understand the revelation of joy. The joy of the Lord is our what? Is our strength. It's the joy, beloved. It's the joy. Look at Psalms 20 and 7. Look at Psalms 20 and 7 and walk with me today. Psalms 20 and 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Yes, Lord. When we understand the joy and, and, and decide to enter and allow the joy of the Lord to be our strength, we can be like the psalmist say, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we remember the name of the Lord. And like Job said in Job 19 and 25, I know that my Redeemer lives. Yeah, so when we make this up in our mind, beloved, you know, it's time right now in this day and age, it's so many people living in depression. It's so many people living in depression, beloved. It's so many. You know, they don't understand why. 
they, they shut themselves off from not wanting to talk and they can't even celebrate. When the joy wants to be there and needs to be there, that depression sits on them. They'll lock their mouth up, lock their mind up, and they won't even desire to celebrate. So if we can't celebrate, how can the joy of the Lord be our strength? How can we get the strength to remain? Anybody need strength to remain? Yes, Lord. We need strength to remain, beloved. We need strength to remain. Yes, yeah, so we have to make it up in our mind, beloved. If we know that situation, we, regardless of the situation, we need, to, we need to understand that the joy of the Lord is our salvation. Regardless of how heavy it is, regardless of the fire, the flood, regardless of what they say, we need to understand that the joy of the Lord is our our salvation. Anybody thankful for the joy of the Lord being their salvation? Yes, so that's why we praise God, beloved. Yes, so we praise Him because, yes, so even when we were sick, beloved, He showed Himself. Even when our finances wasn't there, He showed Himself. Even when we was in the darkest place of our life, in that deep trouble that we thought was going to take us under, the joy of the God showed himself. Has God ever showed himself in your life to where you give him praise? Yes, Lord. You, you gave God the glory. You know that he, he's a savior. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When you were sick, beloved, when you was depressed, he made a way. Yes, Lord. When you might, when your mind wasn't right, God made a way. Anybody have evidence that the Messiah is real? I say anybody have evidence that Jesus is the Savior of the world? Anybody have evidence? Yes, so that's what he's wondering. Do you have evidence? Have he, if he's made a way, you should be giving him praise. If Jesus has delivered you, if Jesus has restored you, if Jesus has brought you out, you should be giving him praise because you have the evidence. You don't have to ask somebody if he's been good. You know, you said like the writer said, when I look back over my life, I can truly say that he he has blessed me. Anybody been blessed by God? Yes, Lord. I got evidence, beloved. I got evidence. That's why I can't act cute. And I don't have to ask and consult you to see how good God has been. I know he's brought me through. I know that he's made a way. I know that he's a deliverer. I know it. Yes, Lord, I know it. Yeah, so anybody know it? Yeah. yeah, so you know it. And now we have here, Jesus, this is the first time that he, he, was, he allowed them. He allowed them to worship him in his messiahship. This is the first account in the text that we're going to work. This is the first account that he allowed them to worship him in his messiahship. Yes, Lord. Where he really, when they, he wanted them to see him as Jesus the way. He wanted them to see that him is Jesus the way. And there's a time to where they didn't see him as Jesus the way. Yes, Lord, Jesus is the way. And he did, and even as we go down and work it, then you will see that these people, that they should have saw him as the way. They never saw him as Jesus the way. Look at Proverbs 17 and 22. Yes, Lord, Jesus the way. Proverbs 17 and 22. It's time, look at beloved. Proverbs 17 and 22, a merry heart doeth good like what? Medicine. Like medicine. Glory to God. A merry heart. It's time for the oil of joy. I want you to listen to the revelation and get this clarity, beloved. If you can get this, we're going to unlock some harvest in your life today. Anybody want harvest in your life today? Yes, Lord. He said, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. Yes, but a broken spirit drying the bones. Yes, a merry heart, beloved, it gives you an advantage. 
in your life, a merry heart. Anybody need an advantage in your life? Yes, or you need an advantage, but you never, you wondered, you looked at other people and wonder why they walked in victory, why it seems like nothing bothered them. A merry heart is like medicine. Man, that's because they tapped into some joy. Yeah, so then they understand they have the advantage. Anybody need the advantage in your life? Yeah, so the merry heart, is, it gives you an advantage. I said it gives, it's an influence. Now, depression can start from the spirit and dry you up, beloved. Depression can, can get in your spirit and start in your spirit and dry you up. That thing will get in the root of your body and dry you up. You won't even want to smile. You can't smile. You can't think. You can't do anything. You can't celebrate. You're wondering why everybody else is mad. You just want to complain. That depression can start in the spirit and dry a life up. Yes, Lord. But I thank God we have here in our text that God, that Jesus here offered an invitation. Yes, Lord, he offered an invitation. Yes, Lord. He told him to get me a donkey. He said, get me a donkey. And God, and he, God has sent an invitation your way, beloved. He said, get me a donkey. Get, he sent an invitation your way. And many a times when he sent a person to go and get you. In this case, he sent two people to go and get them, to get that donkey. But he, he, he gave the invitation. And sometimes when the invitation comes our way, we ask ourselves, do you really want me? I got to pass. <clears throat> Glory to God. Do you really want me, Jesus? I got to pass. Do, have you looked over my record? Have you seen my past? Jesus, I see the invitation, but do you really want me? I got to pass. Yes, Lord. But Jesus said yes. And that's when we begin to wrestle, begin God and begin ourself. And the donkey could have, he, he, the donkey itself couldn't even come to Jesus. And you couldn't even come to Jesus. But Jesus said, I'm going to come to you. Glory to God. He sent the two men. He said, go and get that donkey. And I'm not calling you a donkey, but I'm, I'm saying it in the sense to where I, I, the way that we live is like a donkey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Aren't you glad? Yes, Lord, that the Savior seen you pass the restraints and the restrictions Yes, Lord, this donkey couldn't come to Jesus, but I'm so glad that we serve a Savior that came to see about me. Yes, Lord, he will reach you right there. Do you believe that, beloved? I said right there. Yes, we say come as you are. And right in that sin, in that bondage, that donkey was tied up. That donkey was tied up. And Jesus said, I need that one. He said, I need that one. One. I know I want that one. Yes. And you're not even coming to me. I'm going to come to you. Yes, aren't you thankful that God sent somebody your way? Aren't you glad that God sent someone? We should celebrate even the people that God sends our way. Not to scorn them, but to give God praise that he sent somebody my way to, to help me. Not to destroy me, but to help me. Anybody glad that God sent somebody your way? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When you was in your bondage, beloved, you thought that was the life. Yes, yeah, so when you thought just like the donkey, that donkey was tied up and that donkey thought that was their life. Don't you remember how you was tied up and you thought that was your life? You thought that was how life was supposed to be? You got used to being tied up. You got accustomed to being tied up. But Jesus came along and told somebody, it's time for that one to be set free. Anybody glad? I say anybody. 
everybody glad that he came to your time came that he said I want that one and this is a time right now this is a time right now and I'm sending joy I said I'm sending joy yes Lord look at Psalm 45 Yes, Lord, Psalms 45. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 45, 6 through 7. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest, thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has what? Anointed. Anybody thank God that your day came when he anointed you, when he poured some oil on you. Yes, Lord, and he anointed them with the oil of what? Gladness. A day came that he anointed them with the oil of gladness. And watch what the lesson said. He didn't just anoint them, but he looked what he said. He anointed them with oil of gladness above thy fellows. That's why you have the influence. I said that's why you have the advantage. You, When you live in a life with the oil of gladness, you can live a life with an advantage, but you got to stay in the joy. Somebody tell somebody, you have to stay in the joy. If you want to live a life in with the advantage and the influence, you got to stay in the joy. Come on and tell them again. Tell them, tell them I got to stay in the joy. That's that's where my strength is at. I said, that's where my health is at. I got to stay in the joy. Yes, Lord, this joy of gladness is an influence that's on your life, beloved. And it called you to be above. That's why you're sitting in heavenly places. That's why you can't come down when you live a life with the oil of joy. I'm sitting in heavenly places. I can't be mad. I say I can't walk with my mouth tooted up and my nose high above all. I'm, I'm glad because I'm walking in joy because I know what God did for me. I know my Redeemer lived. Why? Because I got receipts that he lived. Look at Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison, yes, Lord, to them that are bound. Listen, beloved, and follow this, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. You know, as a people that live in mourning, and yes, remember we talked about a time to remain. It takes strength to remain. But we have to overcome the morning. We have to overcome the morning. Remember the joy? Because morning will almost starve out the joy. Because look, and look, he said, I comfort all that, all that mourn. The third verse, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. This is what he appointed to everybody that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for what? Ashes and what else? The oil, somebody say this with me, the oil of joy. The oil of joy. Come on and say it loud. The oil of joy for what? For mourning. Get out of that mourning, beloved. Get out of that mourning. Somebody tell somebody to shake it off. Tell them to shake it off. You appreciate that life, but you got some joy. If you live in that morning, you can't live in joy. You got to come out of that morning and live in the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. 
Yes, Lord. You got to come out of that morning. We've all lost people that we love. We all lost people that we care about. But God's plan for our life and his word is greater. I said his word is greater. Yes, Lord. He's giving you all, all of joy. Yes, Lord. All of joy for morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And, and then he said, what else? The garment of praise. Yes, Lord, put on praise for the spirit of heaviness that you that they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. Yes, Lord, that he what? That he what? Yes, that he might be glorified. You're the planting of the Lord. That's why you, oftentimes you hear me say, God is a master planter. He, he said he, look at what he said, the planting of the Lord. Yes, so that they, even before that, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Yes, or the planting of the Lord that might be glorified. Yes, Lord, you ought to give God praise, beloved, because joy, I'm telling you, if we can understand the power of joy, if we can get the revelation of the oil of joy, I, that oil of joy, beloved, can unlock strange doors. I say, listen to me now. Listen to me, beloved. Receive it, the oil of joy. If we can really understand this, because this is what fights us in our house. Because we, 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 we let anger, we let bitterness, we let frustration and anxiety to starve out joy to where we begin to combat each other and begin to fight each other. And then when we do that, we suppress the joy and joy can't rise up. But God said, I poured on you the anointing, the oil of joy, and I want it in your house. I want it in your heart. I want it in your soul. I want it in your spirit. Beloved, joy can unlock strange doors. That's why it fights you so much to make you so busy, to make you so frustrated, to make you so quick in the temper because the all of joy, Satan knows he's fighting you because he knows the power of the all of joy. That all of joy, beloved. Can you, can you imagine how your life would be? If you begin to dance like how David danced, can you imagine how your life would be when the temptation comes? Instead of crying, instead of woe is me, you begin to do your dance. You begin to give God praise. You begin to shout the victory. Why? Because you know your Redeemer lives. Anybody thank God for joy? We got to learn to dance, beloved. We got to learn to rejoice. Yeah, so we got to learn to, to smile. Yeah, so not waiting for the, the right time to smile, but that smile, listen to this. Don't wait for the right time to smile. That's not going to change the thing. The, the, the smile is going to change it. So when you smile and live in the joy, that's going to change the thing before it happens. But you got to learn to live in the joy, regardless of what they said, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you have. The joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. The joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Now we have Jesus here going towards his passion, going towards the Holy Week, going towards his passion. And he needed something to ride on. He needed something to ride on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He needed something to ride on. Yes, Lord. He needed something. And that's what he's been looking for us. And he's been sending people our way. And he always needs somebody. And God always uses a man. He's all, he always uses a man. And he said, I need someone to ride on. And yes, Lord, Jesus said, I need somebody to ride on. In that case, it was a donkey. But right now, today, he's looking for somebody in here to ride on. Would you let Jesus ride on you, beloved? Yes, Lord. Would you let Jesus ride on you? And you got to be careful when you let him ride today. You got to keep him on there. 
that tomorrow and you got to keep him on there the next day and the next day when Jesus ride on you people know that you've been written by Jesus yes Lord I said the neighbors are know your co-workers are know the day that you let Jesus ride on you I said the neighbors are know your family are know yes Lord Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And he didn't use a horse. He didn't use a horse. You know, horses are known for war. Horses are known. You know, for horses, uh, horses are known for war. But he used a donkey. You know, donkeys are stubborn. Donkeys are stubborn people. I'm not people. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. Donkeys are stubborn. And they work hard, though. But they're stubborn. Yes, yeah, Lord. But I thank God. And donkeys never put up front. They never put up front. Yes, yeah, Lord. But Jesus said, give me a donkey that's tied up. Give me a donkey that's tied up. Yes, Lord. Give me one that's tied up. And he sent the disciples there. Didn't even give them an address. But it's just amazing how God's divine destiny will find you. He didn't tell them an address. He just told them to go in there before me and get me a donkey that's tied up. Yes, Lord. He told them to go and get me one. Yeah, so he'll choose an animal, beloved, with restrictions, one that's limited, still tied up. Yeah, so Jesus will still use somebody, uh, someone that's connected by something that won't let you go. I said, anybody in here that's still connected by something or someone that won't let you go, somebody in here is just like that donkey in the text. You've been connected with something or someone that refuse to let you go. Yes, Lord. But today it's going to let you go, beloved. I wish you tell somebody it's going to let you go today. It's going to let you go. He comes to some that was stuck in bondage. I don't know how he found you, but I know how he found me. I was stuck in some stuff. I was tied up in some stuff. Either do I have a witness out there? Have you been stuck in some stuff? Has Jesus have what brought you out? Yes. Yes. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, beloved, we weren't meant to be tied up. And he knows that. Yes, Lord. He knows that. He's concerned about not just those that, that's here, but he's concerned about the other ones. I said Jesus is concerned about the tied up folks. That's who he's concerned about. Yes, yeah, so or not just the ones that are there. He, the Pharisees and the other ones that was there, he's not concerned about them, not necessarily, because they're not acknowledging him. They don't see him as Savior. They, they just see him. They thought he was coming in there a different way. They was expecting a king. They didn't expect him to walk or ride on a donkey in there. But Jesus was, he came and he was ready for the tied up folks. Aren't you glad that he came? Yes, Lord, riding in. Aren't you glad that he came riding in your life? Aren't you glad that he came and he died for you? Aren't you glad that he came and not so puffed up, but he was so concerned about the one that was tied up? Anybody thank God that he was he was he was determined that you should be saved? Anybody thank God? Yes, Lord, that he came to reclaim you. Yes. Yes, Lord. Don't you know that he reclaimed you? And beloved, you got to learn to reclaim some stuff. You got to reclaim your marriage. There's some stuff that you gave up. There's, and you got to reclaim it. Just like Jesus said, I'm coming for that donkey. That person is tied up. Amen. 
that sister, that brother that's tied up and I'm coming to reclaim that. The sinners, I came for the righteous, but to call the sinners to repentance. Don't you know it's time for us to reclaim, beloved? Yes, Lord. The donkey had an owner. Yes, you know, it was owned by another master. And we was owned once a time by another master. And that master was sin. That master was a bad habit. That master, that thing drove us. He carried us. And we followed that thing. Aren't you glad that Jesus said, I came to change the God. I'm reclaiming you. I know you didn't want it. You didn't expect it. You didn't even think you was worthy. But I'm reclaiming you. Yes, yes. yes Lord. Beloved, it's time to reclaim some things in our life. Uh, yes, Lord. Just as Jesus said, go tell them that the law, tell them in my name. Tell them I got need for them. And beloved, you got to use the name now. He showed himself as Messiah coming into the land. He showed himself. I said, and then today, he wants to show himself in your marriage. Why don't you give God praise that he wants to show himself? I say in your marriage, in your children's life, in your finances, it's time to reclaim some stuff. Are you ready to reclaim? I say, are you ready to reclaim? I say, are you ready to reclaim? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The first part of my life, it was troublesome. I said, the first part of my life was troublesome. But today, I said, today I'm reclaiming. I said, I'm reclaiming my children. Yes, Lord. But I'm doing it in the Messiahship. I'm doing it in Jesus' name. Jesus came in on the donkey and they said blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and now you got to come in your house in the name of the Lord you got to go into your children in the name of the Lord you got to go into your finances in the name of the Lord you got to go into your future in the name of the Lord somebody shout up reclaim Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on and stand to your feet and give God some praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's time to reclaim some things, beloved. It's time to reclaim some things. Jesus went moved with how they saw him. And we have to be careful. Waiting for people to see us in a certain way. It's time for us to reclaim some things. You can't go into the relationship waiting for the person to tell you how beautiful you are. You got to know this stuff before you go in there. You can't wait in the battle and try to realize how strong you are. You got to go into the battle strong. Jesus wasn't concerned right then. Later on in the text, he said he, he wept because they didn't acknowledge, they couldn't discern his presence. And that would be a terrible thing, beloved, if God himself sent somebody your way to tell you to follow Jesus, to trust Jesus, to believe in Jesus. That would be a terrible thing. For God to send someone. Your way. To trust his son. To believe what his son said. It would be a terrible thing for us to say we won't do it. We're too busy. 
I got more life to live out there. I want to be stay. I want to remain tied up to that thing. I live my life tied up. Beloved, Jesus came to set the captives free. He came to open the prison doors. To set at liberty those who are bound. You don't have to live like that. We don't have to live like that. Like we don't have a Messiah. That we don't have a Savior. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. It's okay to be free. Don't fight with that, that rope, that chain. And, and desire to keep that thing. Because we'll die right there. But if we can go to the joy. The, and understand the joy of break that thing. The joy of destroy that thing. The joy of the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to go and send you a comforter. And the comforter is going to come and lead you into all truth. And the truth about it is God's word. He said, didn't I do it for Abraham? I made prostitutes in the lineage of God. I made fishermen into apostles. I made prisoners into princes and kings. Won't I do it for you? Believe the word of God. Yay, glory to God. Glory to God. Your life is greater. Your life is greater. Trust God. Serve God with all your heart. Serve God with all your strength. Serve God with all your might, beloved. Love on him. And he'll love you back. Love on him. And he'll love you back. You don't have to be tied up any longer. You don't have to be tied up any longer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. And we give you praise and glory. We exalt you, Lord. Father, we pray for that soul that's still tied up. We pray, Lord, that the oil of joy would enter into their life, enter into their spirit, and cause them to repent of that sin and live for you and receive and accept your Holy Spirit. Save that soul, Lord. Deliver them. Break that chain, that rope off of them. In Jesus' name. That the sick may say, I've been healed. The oppressed may say, I've been delivered. Those that are bound by prison doors, Lord, would say, I've been free. In Jesus' name, save that soul, Lord. And Father, untie those in our communities, in our nations, in our regions. Untie them in the name, Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God. Beloved, God has a need for you. It's time. God has a need for you. He said, go get me that one. I got a need for them. God has a need for you. His need is greater. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and give God some praise.